Leo wanted to develop a piano and add that to his product line and that Harold was just too far ahead of him. So he'd already had it developed and so Leo decided to, this is what he, how he, this is how he simplified it. That Leo just basically just took what he had and went from there instead of reinventing the wheel again. And the gentleman, I think his name was Jack Smith, who worked on the Rhodes pianos, he decided to leave and go work with somebody else. And because the Rhodes piano is both a mechanical device and electronic device, they wanted somebody to that could do both. So I could do, I was mechanical, I could play the guitar, uh, I was uh, electronic, I was technician, I repaired the empires, so it, I got, I inherited it. As the piano evolved, you know, the, the piano that was produced in 1970, 71, 72, 73 was very, depended on the assembler. Um, the harp support blocks were hand mounted. The harp was hand mounted and hand located. Um, the pickup rail and the tomba rail were mounted in the frame by hand. And so the operator had a lot of discretion, you know, that uh, means that pianos could be very different from point to point. I guess Harold got in touch with uh, the gentleman at Peterson, Mr. Peterson, who is the Peterson Strobe Tutors. And he had a design, apparently, for a stereo vibrato system. And Harold thought it was wonderful. And everybody else thought Harold was crazy. You know, but they didn't understand. And so the the amplifier became the Peterson system, which was a stereo vibrato, which really made the suitcase. And uh, then the it was a wonderful product. It had the deficiency of having germanium power transistors in it. So when it when it when it went bad, it went bad in a big way and caught fire and blew out the speakers. Because I worked with so many artists, I worked with all the all of our sponsored artists. I had to develop a sense of touch that was very articulate yeah, and an ear, so I could hear and feel all the nuances per note, not just on a, a group of notes, but all the way per note through the feel. When you push down, there's and, and as you push down different levels. There's different resistances and there's different responses. And so I became very articulate in how to how to feel that. And um, I didn't realize that until later, but uh, that's what allowed me to uh, develop the Mark V. I'm amazed at um, the, the fact that they said it was gonna die. <laughs> And it hasn't died, you know. It's, it's, it's a. The sounds of a rose is a major part of a keyboard artist's repertoire, whether it's produced by Rhodes or produced synthetically. And um, most guys prefer to use the. They like the mechanical sound better but they protect their mechanical instruments, so if they're playing on the road, they use their electronic instruments. But uh, it's, it's as popular now as it was before, if not more so. You know, it's, um, it's funny when I see it on TV, I, you know, I, I see, oh, there it is again. You know, and I see it. <laughs>